When you're starting out, you don't know what to look for in a chameleon cage. You get a cage, you set it up, and then there are the, all these things that you find out, ah, I need, I wish I had them. Well, I've been there, and so here are five things for you to check before you buy a chameleon cage. The first thing is the size and shape of the cage. Now, this is going to be different for every chameleon species, and unsurprisingly, it's going to have a lot to do with how big the chameleon is going to get as an adult. And since this answer is different, whether it's a carpet chameleon, a panther chameleon, or a Parsons chameleon, I'm going to say refer to your care guide, and it's going to give you a minimum size cage. That is the minimum size, but I also encourage you to go to anything bigger. Bigger is better. Now, it's important to say just being bigger is not better. It's really how you set up the cage. And so there's a lot that is packed into that little statement. But when you're shopping for a cage and you have a choice between a smaller and a larger cage, get the larger cage. Now, more and more, different shaped cages are becoming available. Chameleon cages have traditionally been pillar style cages where the base is half the height. The idea was that chameleons like to be in the trees, so they like to be up high, right? And that is true, but chameleons are horizontal animals. And so though they like to be up high, they, they go back and forth. So in reality, a wider cage placed up high is better than a taller cage placed down low. So it really depends on where you're going to be putting this cage, but wider is actually better than taller, as well as whether it's wide or tall, it's placed up high. Ideally, so the chameleon on his uh, perching branch is looking down on you. So uh, as long as your perching branch is like at this height, uh, it really doesn't matter how far down the bottom of the cage is. Uh, obviously, within reason, you can't just have this, this tall of a cage. The second thing is whether it's a screen or a hybrid or even a glass cage. I know different materials have gotten a bad rap over the years, but the fact is screen, hybrid, which is usually with PVC, or glass, they all can be effective chameleon cages. The way you decide which one you need is you take a look at the care guide, you take a look at the conditions of the room that you're going to have the cage in, not the outside conditions, the inside conditions of your room, and you evaluate how different are the two. If the ideal conditions are very similar to the conditions you have in your room, well then get a screen cage. If you need to add more humidity into the cage, then a hybrid cage is ideal. If you need to add more humidity and temperature, then a glass cage becomes the perfect cage for you. Now, of course, each one of those cage types takes a little bit of extra husbandry to do it right. But if you've got a situation where you need to increase the humidity and increase the temperature and you're trying to do it with the screen cage, it's going to be a miserable experience for both you and the chameleon. Next, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to suspend branches and plants above the floor of the cage. And if you see the cage behind me, it's showing exactly what we're looking for. All of these plants and branches are up into the middle of the cage to where the chameleon's actually going to be using them. They just leave a small open space at the top where the chameleon can bask. But throughout this entire middle of the cage, there's branches, there's plants, there's places for the chameleon to hide and to find different microclimates of humidity and heat. Now with a hybrid cage, which has plastic walls, this really isn't that hard because you can just mount pots and branches directly to the wall. Get a drill out and get some zip ties or hot glue or literally just screw it in. But this gets tricky with both a screen cage and a glass cage. With a screen cage, you don't want to put weight on the screen. Screen is not weight bearing. I know you can get away with a little bit, but all it takes is to bump that stick and you've ripped your screen. This of course is the reason behind the invention of the dragon ledges, which you can see here. And this is a product that actually I invented and I sell through the Dragon Strand Chameleon Caging Company at dragonstrand.com. These dragon ledges take the weight from the inside of the cage and then they transfer it to the strong aluminum frame. And by doing that, you're able to put in branches, you're able to put in potted plants. And just like this, this is a floating garden style. This puts things up where the chameleon can use them. So whichever cage you're going to get, make sure you have a plan as to how you're going to mount branches and plants. This back here is the Dragon Strand tall screen cage system, and it comes standard with dragon ledges. 
And that's the benefit of buying a cage from the company that's run by a guy who keeps chameleons. I'm going to make sure that the cages have what you need. The next on the list is mounting accessories. Meaning, if you've got a mister, if you've got a fogger, if you've got lights, how are you going to attach them to the cage? Your typical mist nozzles need specialized mounts. Uh, your fogger tube, you need something to hold it in place. I gotta tell you, in all of my years of building cages and helping people put together cages, the one thing that is most forgotten is to get the mist nozzle mounts. Those are not usually included with the mister that you buy. And you don't think about, well, how am I gonna connect this until you're actually got it out of the box and you're ready to put the mist nozzle on. You're going, how does this attach? Now, I've solved that with this Dragon's Strand Tall screen cage by including two mist nozzle mounts in the box standard so it's there when you open it up. And I also include a fogger input. That way, as long as you're using these uh, standard foggers that we use in the reptile world, and you don't have to MacGyver something up with bubble gum and baling wire just to get the fogger hose to stay put. You have an adapter in the box that's going to do it right out of the box. And finally, you need a drainage solution. The water is coming into the cage, your mister and your fogger, it's got to go somewhere. And most of it is going to end up on the floor of your cage. The question is, where does it go from there? You don't want it to stay on the floor of the cage because that's where your chameleon poops. And the last thing you want is puddles and poop. That makes poop soup, which is a complete unhygienic nightmare. And so where's that water going to go? Is the bottom of your cage watertight? In which case you're going to have to put in a drain and figure out how to get a bucket under there to do something with the wastewater. Putting down paper towels or puppy pads is a poor solution because you still have water in the cage that can mix with the poop. Another option is to set the cage on top of a drainage tray. And that way, the drainage tray collects the wastewater and keeps it physically separate from the chameleon's living space. And that is what I do with this tall screen cage system. It comes standard with a drainage tray and the cage sits on top of the drainage tray and the drainage tray collects all of the water and you can suck it up with a wet dry vac later. And it's a drainage solution that you can use on any table, desk, cabinet, whatever. So those are the five things that you wanna check into when you're looking for which chameleon cage to buy. You need a solution for each one of those. Now, I run the Dragon Strand Chameleon Caging Company. I'm a chameleon guy and I make sure the cages that I sell have the features that you need. Like I said, that's the advantage of buying a cage from a company where the guy in charge is a chameleon guy. And so let's go ahead and use this cage as an example. We'll go through those five items and do a sample checklist. So first, Cage size, the tall screen and tall hybrid, there's another one, are of a cage size that's appropriate for panther chameleons, Jackson's chameleons, veiled chameleons. They are more than minimum for something like a carpet chameleon or a canopy chameleon or any one of those other smaller chameleons. And so actually I would suggest getting one of these for one of those smaller chameleons. Now at Dragon Strand, I also offer wider format cages and so you can go beyond the minimum for that panther chameleon. But if you go into the industry, uh, the two by two by four foot tall cage is a standard that's been considered the minimum for the most common chameleons for a while. And so unless you're getting a Parsons chameleon, uh, Usuleti, or some of these larger chameleons, the standard two by two by four foot will be sufficient. Next, cage type. Once again, this can only be answered by analysis of your room versus the care requirements. I will say though, air conditioning and heating, these things take moisture out of the air. So most chameleons are in a situation where they need more humidity. And this is why hybrid cages are often the better choice for a chameleon home. Now, Dragon Strain, yes, I am showing the tall screen cage behind me, but I also have a tall hybrid cage. It's uh, the same dimensions, except it's a hybrid, which is plastic sides and an acrylic front. Now, many people live in an area where the seasons are drastically different. And so they spend the winter cold and dry, and then the summer is hot and humid. If you have a situation where you have these wildly different seasons, sometimes a screen cage is going to be the best option because you can add solid sides to it. Even if it's just putting plastic sheets on the side when you need more humidity and then taking them off when you no longer need that, that is effective. And so this is why, even though I think that hybrid cages are the most appropriate in most cases, I absolutely will always have a screen option. And as you can see behind me, I'm using a screen cage in my personal situation. In fact, I'm using this to test out a method of creating high humidity while still retaining high ventilation. I'll 
share results when I have them. Next, we talk about mounting things to the sides of the cage or lifting them up off the ground. So in this particular case, I talked about the dragon ledges. These are a unique product and really they only exist because I'm a chameleon guy and we desperately needed something to allow us to create our cages to be as beautiful as say the dart frog cages are. And that's really the motivation for me inventing this. Before this, I was attaching sticks to the screen and if it ripped, it ripped. But I really wanted to have uh, fully potted plants up where the chameleon could use them. And that's what I've got here. Uh, I call it the floating garden style and I've been calling it that for the last 10 years. And I think it's an absolutely beautiful way to set up your chameleon cage. It gives you an open space up top, an open space at the bottom, and in the middle is just dense foliage. The open space up top gives you basking area, and the open space down at the bottom allows you to monitor the poop because we know that's how we monitor how well the chameleons are hydrated, how well they're eating, and just general health. And next is the misters and the fogger input. Now, if you see how I've got these hydration mounts, there's a hole for the standard mist nozzle that Mist King or Climist offers. And then there's this other hole and it actually comes with a grommet. So you can put in quarter inch tubing. This allows you to use a mister from Exoterra or to put in a quarter inch drip line so you can water the plants inside of your cage with a drip system. Once again, making things that us chameleon people really need. And I include two of these with the tall screen or tall hybrid cages. Next is a fogger input. And this does exactly what you would think it would do. It holds the hose in place. In the tall screen cage, you can mount it to the uh, left side or the right side and in the tall hybrid, you mount it on top. And finally, in the tall screen cage and the tall hybrid cage, you have a drainage tray. And the drainage tray is weight bearing, and so you're able to put the cage on top of the drainage tray. It'll hold the cage up out of the wastewater, and then whenever you wanna get rid of the water, you get your wet dry vac and you just suck it all up. It's as easy as that. Now, the tall screen cage system also has a number of features that uh, people who have already put together cages will appreciate. The first is that even though it's a screen cage, it has a solid PVC back. And this is there because you don't need that misting going through the back of the cage and hitting the walls of your house and getting on the furniture. It's there to block the mist. So any mist coming in, if it hits the wall, it's going to come down and get into the drainage tray. Yes, I use my own products and I see the problems that some of the cheaper ones can cause. Next, I actually include two floor panels. One is a solid floor panel and the other is a screen floor panel. This screen floor panel is for 100% drainage and that's when you have all your plants and branches up off the floor of the cage. That makes sure that there's no puddles. The solid floor panel is if you're going to have pots or something on the bottom of the cage. Some people still want to do that, that's fine, uses the solid floor panel. Now, this is also a great help if you're doing a quarantine or if you're doing any sort of deep cleaning because that means you can replace the floor panels when one has to go out for cleaning. And me, when I'm doing a quarantine, I like to have the solid floor panel because it's easier to collect the poop for uh, a fecal analysis and to make sure it's clean. So I use the solid floor panel until I'm sure that my chameleon has gone through quarantine and then I put in the screen floor panel. Now, in all of this, you might be saying, well, Bill, how come the other companies don't put in all these features that we need as chameleon people? And that is a great question. The answer is that they don't need to. And really, if I was in charge of their company, I wouldn't. If you're looking what Zoomed does, Zoomed has the Reptibreeze, and that is the staple chameleon cage in the community. And the reason why it's a staple is because it's the cheapest. And when your main selling feature is cost, you need to make it as cheap as possible. It's also got the widest distribution. That helps. But all of these features that I'm talking about, these come with experience, and people don't appreciate it until they've already gone through their first experience and saying, oh, while well, I need all of this stuff. Somebody coming into Petco or through a reptile show and uh, getting their first chameleon isn't going to appreciate all these things that they'll eventually need. But the thing is, if Zoomed or any other company that wants to make the cheapest cage possible can't market those features, can't explain those features to the potential customer, then they're adding cost to the product that doesn't benefit them. I mean, th this is the nuts and bolts of product marketing. In my professional life, I'm a product marketer. This is what I do. The thing is, 
No product can be the cheapest as well as the most full featured. Those literally have to be two separate products. And there's always a market for the cheapest. And the full featured always takes a lot of effort to sell because it's more expensive. And if it's more expensive, you have to justify it. Zoomed and these offshore companies are trying to get the customer who's new and doesn't want to spend a whole lot of money. They don't want to have to spend money on marketing trying to explain why they should spend more money on these whiz -bang features. Me, on the other hand, I'm a chameleon guy. I am all about education. I have a podcast. I have a YouTube channel, Instagram. That is what I do. I educate. And so I am working every day to explain why you need these features, how to use these features. And so I have that educational infrastructure in place to where I can justify creating a full featured product. In fact, it would be strange if I didn't do the full featured product. Somebody has to, and the most appropriate person to do that, of course, is someone like me. And the reason why I'm bringing all of this up is that we shouldn't look at the market as, oh, ZoomEd and Dragonstrand are competing. We're really not. Yes, I absolutely lose sales to ZoomEd because they're much, much, much cheaper. But my cages are handmade in the United States. I could not keep up with the demand of a ZoomEd type cage. And that cage is not a bad cage. That cage has an important position in our community because that is what gets people their first step into this door. If their only choice was to buy one of these full featured cages, we would lose so many of our entry level people. And so it's good that we have an economy style cage. And it's good for those people once they get their first step into the door, they get a taste, they get to know their way around, they get to know what they need. It is good that there is a dragon strand option for them that they can say, okay, I'm going to graduate to this. I now know why he's putting all those features in there. And yeah, so now it's more expensive, but it makes sense now. There is a place for every one of us cage manufacturers. So where do we go from here? Well, I've given you the five items that you're going to have to answer once you get the cage. If you get the cheapest cage available, well, then you're going to have a screen box. All of these other things, you'll have to figure out how you're going to deal with them. If you spend more money and get the Dragon Strand, you're going to have all of it in the box waiting for you. And so it's up to you to decide what you want to do. The point is you come into it with all the information you need to make the best decision. And if you decide that a Dragon Strand is the right cage for you, there's a link down in the description. Purchasing a Dragon Strand cage supports the outreach that I'm giving to you right now. All right, it's time for the feedback corner. As usual, these topics are presented in my newsletter that are sent out the week before. And so I gather information and feedback and perspective from my newsletter readers. In this manner, I'm able to give you different perspectives than just mine. And I asked my newsletter community to share their experience in setting up their first chameleon cage. And of course, this is one of the favorite parts of my outreach is to get the feedback and share perspective. Now I wanna make it clear. I get a lot of feedback and I get excellent perspective and advice from the people who are responding back to me. I would actually be able to make an entire video out of each one of the emails I've received. And I thank you so much for that. So from all of the points that these people make, I pick out the primary one or couple to share with you that would be the most helpful for you. And so let's get to it. My first one comes from Mikey Ben, who says, my suggestion is before buying an enclosure, Determine where you plan on putting it. Each room has different high use, high traffic, temperature and humidity fluctuations, etc. This helps determine what type and size of enclosure will be best. Bigger is better if the space is available. Essentially he's saying location, location, location. And he's absolutely correct. How you set up the cage does depend upon where that cage is in your room, your house, or what the environment around the cage is. We see this often with people taking a look at their weather app and saying, okay, this is the kind of cage I need, when in reality, the situation and environment within the room that the cage is in is completely different than what's outside. And this makes perfect sense because we've got air conditioning, we've got heating. The conditions inside our house are different than the conditions outside. Thank you, Mikey Ben. Next one comes from Eliza Kornberg. She says, what I would advise a first time cage buyer, apart from everything you already mentioned, is to find something that looks good enough to display in their front room. 
Take your time to build it out and decorate the inside so it truly is a work of art, but also pay attention to what the outside looks like. And this taps into the dynamic that the more beautiful it is, both inside and outside, the more attention we give to it. That, that's just a human thing. And not only the attention that we give to it, the enjoyment that we get out of it, and the impression that visitors to our house will have of it, or else just the people who are looking at it on Instagram. In fact, the husbandry that we show on Instagram or any social media is critical to the building of our community in the right direction because this is how people learn. They see the picture, they say, okay, that's what it should be. And if you have a beautiful cage set up to where the chameleon is taken care of and the enclosure looks like it fits into your home, you are giving a positive look for our entire community. I know for some of this, it doesn't matter to the chameleon. They're, if they're taken care of well, they don't care. But for us as a community, it actually makes a difference. And this is one way that you can really give back to the community is how well you present your setup. Next is Annabelle Lind asking, where does the water go? She writes, please don't wait to figure out drainage. Most enclosures do not address the amount of drainage that comes from the high nighttime humidity that chameleons need. I'm not power tool savvy, so this was challenging when setting up my enclosures. Yeah, uh, drainage is a big thing, and this is one thing that many people don't think about until they set up their mister, and all of a sudden everything is getting wet. I've used it as one of mine, and Annabelle is bringing it back up. So I encourage you to uh, take this seriously. Figure out drainage before you set up your cage, before you bring your chameleon home. Thank you, Annabelle. And next is Susan Malloy. Susan recommends that we research ad nauseum. Uh, Susan followed Chameleon Academy guidelines, two thumbs up, and set up the best that they could afford. My husband and I also researched drainage and what to put enclosure on until we could not think anymore. There you go. There's drainage again, <laughs> if you ever wondered how important it is. And big recommendations are to use timers that will make your life easier. Automation is a part of the chameleon setup, and it does make things easier. Having the lights come on, the misting come on, even the fogging come on automatically is a real help in making sure that your chameleon gets consistent care every day. And next, Marsha Ibsen is saying, go big. Marsha is saying, the biggest thing I discovered was that chameleons in their enclosures are not cheap. And yes, this is very true. Uh, you can buy a, like I said, the screen box, you can buy that pretty cheap. But once you start adding things on, you realize that the cost does go up. You can do some things DIY, but now you're just trading your time for money. And if you have the time and you have the ability to build these things, then that may be a trade-off that you're willing to make. But if you're new to this, you're going to start putting more and more money in to make sure it's right. And this is just an aspect of keeping chameleons. It's not cheap. I, I don't think anybody would tell you it is cheap. I, I know some people brag about how cheap they can make it, but it's really only cheap if you have a lot of skills, a lot of tools, and a lot of experience. If you're starting off, come into it with the knowledge that we do spend a lot of money on our chameleons just to set them up right. And this isn't because we like to spend money. It's because it's expensive to put an arboreal setup into our living room. It's just the nature of it. So be ready. It does cost a little bit. She goes on to say, don't start small and thinking you can go big later. Start big at the beginning. And I agree with that. If you start off small, it's just going to be more difficult to set it up correctly. And definitely do not start off smaller than the minimum suggested. Go bigger if you at all can. She then shares great advice as uh, look for examples online, visual examples, so you know what it means. I, I know firsthand uh, trying to describe something in a care guide so uh, people can understand what I'm talking about. I can do it a little bit. I can get the idea across, but nothing communicates like a picture. And uh, Marsh is absolutely correct. Go look at pictures of advanced keepers and say, okay, that's the feel I want. Uh, through Dragon Strand and the Chameleon Academy, I've done a lot of simplistic pictures, like this, this uh, setup that I have back there. That truly is just some dragon ledges, some branches, and three potted plants. 
This is a simple setup, this floating garden that I've created back there. I've specifically created it so it is simple to replicate. So people who are starting off with chameleons can make a beautiful and effective cage setup without a whole lot of experience, creativity, or skills in putting things together. I love the bioactive cages. I do them myself. But when you're just starting off, this is what you want. And you can grow from there. And finally, she says, take the time to understand the importance of UVB light. This is a basic of chameleon husbandry, but you'd be surprised at how many interpretations and executions there are out there floating around on social media. Much of the advice contradicts each other. And so the best thing you can do is actually understand how UVB works and how to set up a UVB system. Obviously on Chameleon Academy, I tell you how to do that. Thank you, Marsha. And there you have it. There's feedback from the community. If you'd like to be part of this and offer your own feedback and your own experience, please sign up for the Chameleon Academy newsletter. It comes out every Thursday with a new topic. And now, go into the world and be excellent to each other. My name is Bill Strand. This is the Chameleon Academy. I'll see you next time.